coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. If you have ever wanted to own an aviation museum, now is your chance. California legislature passes statewide UAV restrictions. The FAA is behind schedule on another major project. I'm Bree Cross, it is August 27th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. You won't see us run very many for sale stories on Airborne Unlimited, but this one caught our attention. The collection of airplanes at the Golden Wings Flying Museum in Blaine, Minnesota is for sale, and by the collection, owner Greg Henrik means the entire collection as a complete package. We first learned about the sale from Rich Davidson's Nordo News blog. According to the Golden Wings Flying Museum website, the collection features such rarities as NASA's first aircraft, a stainless steel amphibian, and the first airplane in which the Pope ever flew. One of six trimotors in the collection is a 1927 Ford trimotor. The full ground-up restoration is America's oldest existing airliner. Many of the aircraft are airworthy while nine are in various stages of restoration, according to the website. According to Nordo News, Herrick does not want the collection sold piecemeal, so potential buyers are asked not to get in touch unless they are genuinely a qualified buyer for the entire collection of airplanes. Once again, we see that because of the lack of FAA regulations regarding UAV operation, we are ending up with poorly thought out laws being placed into effect by states and local municipalities. The California legislature has just passed a bill that will prevent unmanned aircraft from flying at an altitude below 350 feet over any private property in the state unless permission from the owner is received. Because the recognized cap on UAV operation from the FAA is 400 feet, this law makes it very difficult to comply with the rule for flying over any private property in California, even with permission. Brian Wynn, the president and CEO of the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, says this law will have a chilling effect on the emerging industry, which can create tens of thousands of jobs and have a $14 billion economic impact on the state. Wynn also points out the Supreme Court has consistently held that only the FAA can regulate airspace and the property rights do not extend into the sky. Wynn urges California and other states to wait until the FAA completes its rulemaking process before passing legislation that may run contrary to federal laws. However, California has now taken the lead in passing bad UAV use law. After the break, the FAA cannot seem to come up with a pilot database. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We our Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The FAA Inspector General's Office has released a report requested by the leadership of the House of Transportation Committee indicating the agency has not done enough to emphasize the significance of obtaining comprehensive pilot records and to develop a centralized database. The 2010 Airline Safety and Extension Act mandated that the FAA create a pilot records database to ensure pilot records are retained for the life of the pilot and that aircraft carriers review those records when making hiring decisions. The report summary says in part, quote, the agency does not expect to issue a related rulemaking until 2017, and the database will likely not be fully implemented until more than a decade after Congress mandated its creation in 2010." End quote. 
In the meantime, air carriers, in large part, do not have all relevant pilot records available to review when evaluating pilot applicants for job positions and many pilots have serious concerns over their privacy rights. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. Over the last few weeks in this segment of Airborne Unlimited, we've been talking about the Airborne Partnership Initiative, we call it the API. To understand how you can be involved, let's quickly review what the API is trying to achieve. The API is a synergistic partnership with ANN and others in the industry to offer more exposure, a greatly lessened strain on individual resources, and the advantage of starting out with what is already a solid professionally produced web TV program, Airborne Unlimited, but most of all, raising the bar in the quality and distribution of aviation news and information. We fully understand that good partnerships start with ANN being willing to shoulder much of the burden and tasking our partners individually and collectively as little as possible while maximizing their returns. We are simply asking our partners to assist us with their eyes and ears in regards to covering the topics about which they are most expert and most want to be disseminated to the industry and or public at large. We will help establish information conduits that are beneficial to our partners and to us for the sake of producing the information using the high quality format of Airborne Unlimited. An example of this capability was demonstrated recently with our AirVenture Innovation Preview Series produced in partnership with EAA at AirVenture 2015. Put more simply, our partners just have to furnish us with solid information and munition, and we will fire the shots so that all who care about aviation can hear and see it. For more detailed and complete information about being an API partner, please touch base with ANN CEO Jim Campbell at jim at news.net. After these messages, at least part of a space shuttle will fly again. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NASA engineered four water tanks and one waste tank from the Space Shuttle Endeavor on display at the California Science Center. The serviceable water tanks will be put to good use on the International Space Station. The Jacksonville Aviation Authority is the fixed base operator at Herlong Recreational Airport, located in Florida. The FBO has always been referred to as Herlong Aviation, but will now be rebranded to First Coast Flight Center to more effectively market its services. The FAA issued an STC, allowing GOGO to launch GOGO's 2KU Next Generation Satellite Connectivity Service. GOGO expects to launch commercial service of its 2KU technology later this year. 2KU is expected to deliver peak speeds of more than 70 megabytes per second. Boeing is projecting a demand in China for 6,330 new airplanes over the next 20 years. Boeing released its annual China Current Market Outlook on Monday in Beijing, estimating the total value of those new airplanes at $950 billion. The Chatham, Massachusetts Board of Selectmen decided not to fight City Hall or at least engage in a legal battle with the FAA. The board voted to issue a proposal allowing Skydive Cape Cod to continue operation at the local airport. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. When things get tough, ATC can be there to help a pilot in need. 
However, based on a preliminary report from the NTSB, it didn't work that way in this case. The accident occurred on August 16, 2015. Near Farmingdale, New York, the pilot of a Beechcraft Bonanza reported to ATC that he was having engine problems. He initially headed for Farmingdale, but then reported that he would not be able to make it. The controller then provided information on Bethpage Strip and informed the pilot that the airport was closed, however there was a runway there. The next several transmissions between the controller and pilot revealed that the pilot was unable to see the runway, while the controller continued to provide heading and distance to Bethpage Runway. In fact, the former Bethpage Runway was now an industrial site occupied by buildings. The accident site was located about one quarter of a mile northwest of the former runway's approach end. In the ensuing crash, the pilot was fatally injured and a passenger on board the aircraft survived. Something really wrong happened here. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.